So was like 1989 the greatest year to be a gamer or what? It was the year the Game Boy was released. It was the year the Sega Genesis was released. Nintendo had top tier hits like DuckTales. Captain N the Game Master debuted on television. And along with all that, we get the TurboGrafx-16, which kind of came out of nowhere to me. With the TurboGrafx-16, I remember thinking, NEC? Who's NEC? Like the electronics guys? At least with Nintendo, you had like arcade games like Donkey Kong, things like that. Sega, of course, you had all the great Sega arcade games. And I didn't know anything about NEC, but I knew their games looked pretty cool, so I was interested in grabbing one, and I did. It had such a unique following. I was that kid in my school who had a TurboGrafx-16. And when the console wars were just starting to pick up, you had Nintendo versus Sega. It was like your Coke versus Pepsi with TurboGrafx-16 being RC Cola. It has every right to play with the big boys, but maybe it just didn't have the most marketing, but the fans of it are super, super loyal, super loyal fans. The TurboGrafx-16 had been out in Japan for two full years before we got it. So there was already a huge library of games just waiting to be ported over. And many of them didn't make it, but a lot of them did. And we've done several videos like this, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. The system only had four launch titles, but in this video, we're gonna cover all four, as well as all the other Turbo Chip games that came out for the TurboGrafx-16 back in 1989. Starting with Keith Courage and Alpha Zone. Well, Keith Courage and Alpha Zones was the packing game. This was the game that everybody played because it was the game that it came with. They could have used a better packing game, but you know what? Something's better than nothing, so here we are. And it wasn't the fact that it was just terrible. I mean, it really wasn't terribly bad. Kind of give you that little side-scrolling, a little bit like a Monster Boy-ish. You know, you're going around, you can hit the other enemies, collect your coins, you can go inside these doors, they're going to help you out or build you up or whatever. These town stages are pretty small, and it's interesting to note that these town stages can also kill you, hurt you. <laughs> because there's like enemies and there's, you know, traps that you can fall into and stuff. As you're slowly moving along, then that's when you can get your giant robot thing. And then you're in these stages where you're using your giant sword to defeat these other enemies. And these stages are not very creative. They just kind of go down and you can just keep moving, then you go down, you move to the other side, you go down, you move to the other side, go down, move to the other side. You fight a boss at the end of all this eventually. And then, what do you know? We move on to the next stage. Keith Courage and Alpha Zones, the pack-in for the TurboGrafx-16. Again, not a terrible game. Eh, they, they just could have done something better. Alien Crush was another launch title. What a great pinball this is. I do love me some video pinball. And they did this one pretty well. There are two screens of chaos here, and both of them have their own set of flippers too, which is good news for you. If you like video pinball, it's one of the ones that you should definitely check out. It has a kind of cool, creepy alien vibe to it. You know, a lot of the, the xenomorphs sticking out and all that too. Royalty-free, license-free, I'm sure, of course, right? <laughs> you got that giant alien down there in the middle too. You can open its mouth every once in a while. You can chuck your ball in there. You get some bonus points that way too. I do like video pinball. Alien Crush is a fun one. We have the Legendary Axe, and in my opinion, the Legendary Axe should have been the pack-in. This one reminds me a lot of uh, Rastin, maybe more than anything else. I don't know, maybe it's just because like the, the vine climbing or something, I'm not sure. It's just, I mean, you can also build yourself up and build your power up and everything too, but pretty decent title too with the Legendary Axe. It's one of the original TurboGrafx-16 games, it's one that a lot of people still go back to, and for people who grew up with the TurboGrafx-16, it's one that a lot of them uh, held as, you know, one of the best ones on the system. I think it's okay. I don't know if it's one of the best ones, but I think it's I think it's worth checking out for sure. Especially if you're just getting into TurboGrafx-16, it's, it's one to look out for. Victory Road is a pretty decent driving game. Not so much of a racing game like racing game, but kind of like an outrun driving game. It does give you a lot of customization for like how you want your tires, how you want your body, how you want your gears. The thing is you need to have give yourself enough gears so you actually switch it into gears because you're also manually changing gears. <laughs> <laughs> in the game, if you don't have enough, don't have enough gear power, uh, then you, <laughs> you may only go into uh, go into third gear. You go try to go into the fourth gear, it won't go anywhere. <laughs> well, it'll end up dropping speed. Kind of fun how it changes, you know, the, the day cycles and stuff like that too. It's a driving game, and it was done pretty decently on the TurboGrafx-16. It's called Victory Run. After launch, we had Blazing Lasers come out, and this one is one that most people hailed as probably the greatest shooter on the TurboGrafx-16. It's the one that most talk about for sure. You get a, it is your typical vertical shooter, but done very, very well. And TurboGrafx-16 did a lot of shooters very well. This game is fast paced, fast action, 
you have non-stop power-ups coming at you all the time. So I mean, if you want, you have your lasers, that's fine. You want to shoot more bullets, that's fine. There's always going to be an option and always going to be ability to uh, swap out your weapons, basically. I also like any shooter, like this going to be the select button, but you get to choose how fast you want to go. Like speed isn't a uh, power-up or anything, you just choose how fast you want to go. That's, I like that. That should be the way it is. And blazing lasers, as far as shooters go on the TurboGrafx-16, absolutely one of the best. Can't deny it. In China Warrior for the TurboGrafx-16, yeah, it's one of the worst. It's... <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. But it just looks like somebody made this game with Macromedia Flash back in 2004. It's honestly not good. I mean, this is one of the games that came out even a couple years prior, so it really dates itself. Where it's like, hey, here's, you know, 1989 video games. Yeah, I'm all about them. But then here's a game that came out, you know, a couple years ago in Japan. <laughs> and ported it over. Well, you know. Some kid's grandma got this for him for Christmas and they had to like act surprised and <laughs> I'm not sure. Look at big old boss fight, look at this. Ah, he got me. All right, Dungeon Explorer, that, that can wash the taste out of our mouth. Dungeon Explorer is a really great game. It's the answer to Gauntlet. It's TurboGrafx-16's answer to Gauntlet and they've had Dungeon Explorer for other consoles too. For some reason, I really associate this game as a TurboGrafx-16 game though. Lots of places to explore. You get to choose like what, you know, uh, what guild you are, whatever the, you know, what class you are, I guess you could call it. Super fun idea on this one. I do love me some Dungeon Explorer. Got the boss fights and everything. It might get a little confusing. It's like, you know, the upstairs, the downstairs, where were you going? What were you in the middle of doing? What's going on? When in doubt, grab some Dungeon Dungeon Explorer, super fun. R-Type, oh my goodness, here we go again. This is the closest to the arcade version of R-Type I had seen when this came out. Like when R-Type first came out in the arcade, I loved it, couldn't play enough of it, loved it in the arcade. They had it for the Sega Master System, it, well, it was okay but not great. It never came out for the NES, unfortunately, but it came out for the TurboGrafx-16, and this was, man, it, it may as well have been the arcade game to me. I loved it. I've never been good at it because it's a one-hit kill, and it's, I mean, it just gets too hard for me. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But I still love R-Type today, and the fact that it's on the TurboGrafx-16, I mean, it's a staple game. It's a must-have. Vigilante available as well for the TurboGrafx-16. You ever play Kung Fu, like for the NES or even in the arcade? Remember Kung Fu? This is basically Kung Fu, just with better graphics. It's literally the same idea. It's just like the enemies come up on you and when they grab you, they just start depleting your life until you shake them loose or kick them out of the way and stuff like that. It's Kung Fu. End of the stages have these boss battles. You got Bruiser Brody, it looks like over here. It's not terrible. It's just, you know, it's, it's all right. Fantasy Zone, we got a Sega game on the TurboGrafx-16. Now they had this for the Master System, they had it for the NES through Tengen, uh, now they have it on the TurboGrafx-16 as well. Hey, why not? I love Fantasy Zone, it's a great game. If you've heard of it, but you're not really familiar with it, the whole level loops itself. But you have to find these little like enemy bosses, like these enemy depots in a way, and destroy them. And in by destroying them, that's when the boss will come out. But it's just cute because I just love how the, I love how the colors look, I love how the music is, the enemies are pretty cute, you know, as they can be. You defeat all the little enemy pods, and then you uh, do a ball boss battle at the end, too. You can also go into shop and use that money to buy upgrades and weapons and stuff like that. It's just a fun game. And on TurboGrafx-16, plays very, very well. Bringing back a classic with Galaga 90, and it plays a lot like Galaga. I love the fact that you can start the game with two ships, because I can do this game so much better with two ships than just one. Instead of having to try to capture one and then rescue it again and have two ships, you can just say, hey, you know what? You want to have one less life and have both ships at the same time? Yes, please. If this game gave you the option to have all three ships, I'd do that. <laughs> it does not. And it's a lot like Galaga, but there's also like, you know, some of the enemies explode into like what looks like fireworks, and I thought that was pretty cool. And then also some of the other enemies do other unique things, like, you know, split apart and split into like, you know, a few enemies all at once, like a chain of them. And other little things like that too, but it's still Galaga at the end of the day, and it's still a lot of fun, especially if you love Galaga. Moto Rotor, the name of this one, Moto Rotor. Well, it's an interesting one. It is a uh, overhead track with all these cars on it and you just have to outrace the other cars. You know, no big thing here. I like the fact that it gives you a whole ton of items and upgrades that you can do. You can choose a few of them up front as well. Uh, but then the, when you win the races, you'll win more, more money or earn more money to uh, get better upgrades as well. You'll always see the same cars on the track. If you fall behind, it will jump you forward. You don't want to do that too many times, but that's, you know, you just, that's how you stay on the track. That's how you have to know what kind of engine to get or, you know, if you need better tires or whatever it is. It's a little slow moving, but I mean, it was kind of interesting to see all the same. Moto Rotor is the name of this one. It's kind of an interesting name on this one. Moto Rotor, huh? 
We're gonna have a golf game with Power Golf. If you like the golf games, it is your typical golf game. And I suck at golf games. And I especially suck at this golf game. Power Golf, all right. Sidearms from the arcade to your TurboGrafx-16. You get your two buttons, one shoots in front of you, one shoots behind you, one shoots to the left, one shoots to the right. Uh, making it real easy for you to shoot, uh, choose which way you want to shoot. And I loved it when Capcom arcade games looked like this. There was a time uh, in history that, man, I wish you could have visited with me if you're not from the age, when games like Sidearms, games like Black Tiger, uh, just games looked like this in the arcade, and it was such a wonderful feeling to see. And now you can see this at home on this system. Sidearms, I mean, at the end of the day, it is a horizontal shooter. At the end of the day, that's all it is. It's just a horizontal shooter, but you play as this, like, mech guy, and, you know, you get your power-ups and upgrades and stuff like that. This is fun. It's called Sidearms. Check it out. World-class baseball, do we gotta? Well, we have the unlicensed teams, and I'll give it to this game too. When you position yourself up to bat, you don't just kind of slide around. You actually, your feet actually kind of pivot to where you're going to stand. So, those things. And then, at the end of the day, it is a baseball game. Baseball games can be fun. Nothing wrong with having a baseball game in the collection. So, so there you go, decent baseball game. Did you know they made a tennis RPG? Now, hold on, first of all, World Court Tennis. You can play this game like a tennis game, and it's a decent tennis game. Gives you enough room to move around, you can toss the ball, you can lob the ball, whatever you know, whatever you want to do. You're playing tennis. The awesomeness to this game, though, was the fact that there was an RPG element to it, where you literally, the king, tells you to go on a quest and all that, and you have your town, you can go inside these houses and talk to people, and they're gonna give you the, you know, shops and everything, give you some clues, give you some tips, and you're on this epic quest to play some tennis, man. And every once in a while, you might go, up. oh, wait a minute, boss fight? Yep. Tennis fight. Here we go. <laughs> and you start playing tennis. <laughs> they made a tennis RP. This is years before Golf Story. They made a tennis RPG on the TurboGrafx-16. And they did the same thing with a racing game later on too, but we'll talk about that video when that year comes around. Show the TurboGrafx-16 some love, would you? I would love it. I'm a huge fan and thank you for watching and we'll do more consoles through more years and a whole lot more games coming up very soon. Make sure you're subscribed. Got another video coming out real quick.